It's the George Plaster Show. 30 years of the best sports talk in Middle Tennessee. Featuring Tennessee Sports Hall of Famer Watson Brown. And it's a shame it's taken this long to get an introduction for this Tennessee Sports Hall of Famer, Kelly Holcomb, along with young gun Billy Derrick. And now, here's your host, George Plaster. Hello again, everybody. Welcome in. As you can tell, we're not in studio, but we're someplace I love being, and that is at a baseball field, Ken Dugan Field to be exact, on the campus of Lipscomb University. Vandy and Lipscomb play tonight. This is the first time Vandy has been over here, they were telling me earlier, in 14 years. They have sold all of the chair backs, and so most everything, if you come around 6 o'clock, it'll be on one of the two berms. Yeah, it's going to be fun today. Uh, obviously, we were talking to uh, Brian Ryman, the assistant coach over here, and they're excited. I mean, it's not every day you get uh, Power 5, Division One SEC school, obviously a program like Vanderbilt playing here. They had Notre Dame here last year, and they actually took two out of three from sure Notre did. Dame last year. So this is a good program. Uh, looking forward to having Coach Forehand on. But, yeah, and it's a beautiful part. I mean, this this field, they got it looking really good. You know, I got a history lesson earlier. Growing up, Lipscomb played at a place called Onion Dell. I didn't know anything about Onion Dell. Billy, if you will, give me just a tad bit more ears. Onion Dell – uh, was on the back side of this campus back that way. And they like, moved into Ken Dugan Field uh, years ago. And this is a beautiful facility. And Brian Ryman, uh, when he asked me to do this several weeks ago, there was no way I was saying, no, Brian has done so much good in the name of baseball over the years. And we're thrilled to be out here. Jeff Forehand will join us today at 3 o'clock, assuming that the tent holds up, and so far it is. Let's go to Murfreesboro and say hello to our man, Kelly Holcomb. He's back. What's up, Kel? Kel? Up, fellas? Yeah, that's <laughs> right. Billy, I, know, I, know Billy, I know Billy missed me. That's, that's a term of endearment, George. Kel. Billy, I want you to look into the camera, <laughs> and I want you to look into it in all seriousness. And tell Kelly, Kelly or Kel or whatever, <laughs> good Lord, uh, how much you missed him. Kelly, I missed you. I'll be honest. That's it? That's, I mean, I, Two I missed Two seconds him. worth? Sounded like a prayer. <laughs> Let us pray. Well, what what Kelly what Kelly not being here does is, is gives me gives me some extra reps. So, I'm, I mean, I can't be too happy he's not here. Because well, if Kelly was here every, every show, I'd. Yeah. You know, it's hard to get a word in. So, edgewise. Kelly, did you take that as sincere? How did you how did you feel about it? Yeah, that wasn't very profound, but, you know, <laughs> it is it is what it is, George. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I don't know. Sorry I had to leave for a few days, Billy. I had other things. I had a wedding to go to. Somebody, somebody texted me the other day and said, how was the wedding? I was like, it's a wedding. <laughs> like, how's a wedding supposed to be? You know what I'm saying? Well, yeah. I mean, you could, like, it'd be easy to say it was nice. You well, couldn't even if it wasn't do that. I mean, if it, it was nice, it was a beautiful wedding. It was awesome. Uh, but, yeah. you know, if it wouldn't be for my wife or if it wouldn't be for wives around the country, mm -hmm. you couldn't get me into a wedding. Right. Let's just be honest. I, I Unless you're that. family, you know? So, while you were gone, I don't know if you're aware of this, Kentucky hired the Pope. I did. I saw that. I saw his little, uh, his little deal, his little commercial that he put on there, and he had his Kentucky uniform on behind yeah. the. He was in front of the BYU Cougar stuff, and he was acting foolish. I guess that's, I guess that's what it takes in nowadays business to get a job. <laughs> well, I don't know if you heard this. So they had a press conference and invited the fan base to be there. Not only did they sell out Rupp Arena. 
at about 21,000, which is what they now wow. figure the place. But they turned away another 5,000. Can you imagine? Wow. Well, that just shows you how crazy Kentucky basketball is. And I think, I think the fans are – I think they're ecstatic about it because I, I we, we talked about it and I've talked about it for the last two weeks in this hiring process. But you can't, as a Kentucky fan, you could not have been happy with what's been happening. Now, Calipari brought a lot of great players there and he won a national championship and he's he's had a lot of success there. But, like, he, he's, he says it out loud, like, you know, my job is to get these guys to the, to the next level. And that's the way that those kids take that. And – I think this guy right here can get them back to where they need to be, and I th- he's obviously a pretty good coach. He, he took P- BYU, which I don't think BYU is known for their basketball. Uh, he took them to two NCAA tournaments while, while he was there. So I, I think they're ecstatic. I think they're excited about it. I really do. Yeah. Other than Danny Ainge, you're right. They're, that's not a school that's known for hoops. But we Wait. must – what is that guy doing? <laughs> Apparently, there are a bunch of people dressed up like that at Rupp Arena. Oh, wow. So oh, he's wow. about to make a papal proclamation there? <laughs> yeah. First, I was confused because I just disregarded the fact right. his last name is Pope, but I quickly yeah. realized. That's but, what we got going. You know, Pope I, is our hope. I never thought there would be this type of reaction. Like, I knew they would probably I have thought some people mixed. in there. I thought it'd be mixed. But, I mean, that was like, we got our program back. Yeah. Well, I think what it really says is they had come to hate John Calipari. Yeah. And what they hated, number one, was him lecturing them, which was stupid. Uh, They don't need to be told how to be fans. And secondly, when he put it out there that, you know, my first job is to get them to the NBA, no, it isn't. I'm not aware that the National Basketball Association wrote his check, which, by the way, is a sizable check. The University of Kentucky was his employer. It was a dumb thing to say, and it pissed off a bunch of the Commonwealth. Yeah, that that was the end of it, Kelly, I think, for a lot of Kentucky fans. Number one, they weren't winning anymore. I mean, they got to the the big one. They got to the NCAA tournament, and then this year you lose to an Oakland team, and that was just that was it, Kelly. I mean, they they, I don't think they were gonna keep Calipari, whether he decided to leave on his own or or they end up. Oh, I don't know. I think there were 33 million reasons why they might. Well, <laughs> uh, yeah, but I mean, were they going to fire him and and pay him that buyout? Is basically Apparently not. So you don't think they would have fired him. Well, I mean, Barnhart came out and said, you know, we're we're in in lockstep now. The fact that he looked like a hostage when he did it, you know, <laughs> yeah. brought some people some humor. Anyway, Enough of that. You you have an award-winning update for Kel. Yep. Is it Kel? Yeah, it's Kel. Okay. I'm confused. <laughs> Don't be a hater, George. Don't hate. I just thought it was Kelly. George drinking some Don't haterade this morning. Yeah, Good he drank his haterade. He's been drinking it for a week. <laughs> really? Uh... Actually, um, it was kind of nice while you were gone. <laughs> I was sure in was. a really good mood, upbeat. Anyway, you have I, I do have an, an update. update. Okay, well, so, uh, you know, yeah. Let's see are if you it's gonna, any good. Are you gonna Are you gonna pay attention to the update? <laughs> Probably not. But go ahead. <laughs> so Michigan is going to serve three years of NCAA probation. They will pay a fine and face recruiting restrictions after the university and five current or former football employees reached an agreement with the NCAA's enforcement staff on recruiting violations and coaching activities by non-coaching staff members, the NCAA hmm. announced today. Who would that non-coaching uh, staff member be? Uh, what was his name? Connor uh, Stallions. Shocking. Right. That's Th- shocking. That took a long time for this to come out, though. No, actually, by NCAA standards, it was pretty quick. Think about it. Well, yeah, it's you're only probably been right. six months ago. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> the agreed-upon penalties also include a one-year show cause order for the participating event individuals the portion of the case that involves Jim Harbaugh, who was hired by the Chargers in January, will be considered separately by the Committee on Infractions. So nothing nothing on Harbaugh yet. Well, I don't know how to tell them this. They don't they, care. But in case they're not aware, he's the head coach of the L.A. Chargers. I don't think he cares. Yeah, what, what could possibly happen that... Oh, I, I don't know. I mean, they punch a hole in SoFi Stadium. 
<laughs> Don't let him draft uh, his quarterback, McCarthy. <laughs> Who knows? I mean, so Michigan, really? Michigan finally being punished, per se, I, yeah. I guess you could say. Uh, let's see here. The Preds last night, they dropped one in Pittsburgh, a yes, game they, they had to have. Yeah. But now you look at it, and they, they're still alive for that, that seven spot. Oh, they're absolutely alive. I mean, because the Wild of, beat the Kings last night. Yeah, but there, there's a couple of scenarios here where they could be the seven. Uh, another Kings loss Thursday night would do it. A loss by Vegas in one of their next two would, would guarantee do it. it. Um, you know, look, the the opposition in these things is not really very stiff. It's Anaheim and the Blackhawks. Yeah. There's a real shot now the Preds are going to Dallas. And if that's the case, I think they get a harder opponent. But on the flip side, they get way less travel. And they're going to have to sort of use that as an encouragement point, you know, if, if that's what they end up having to do. Yeah, it's going to be crazy to, to just see. I mean, number one, who they play, but also number two, do they have to go to Vancouver and all you know all that travel, or do they just have to go over to Dallas? So because the travel in the Western, you know, it's one thing when Pittsburgh and Washington play, they could walk there. Yeah, but <laughs> you know, going from you know Nashville to Vancouver. And being tied to the same number of rest days that the East is, is totally unfair. Yeah. Um, so what we've got right now is the Preds matched up with Dallas if the playoffs started tonight. And they would play actually, the winner. Actually, that's not true. If it started tonight, they'd play the Canucks. I mean, this is updated this morning. This is I don't care of- what it is. I pay pretty <laughs> dad <dead gum> close <laughs> attention. I think it's fair to say no, I, I think know. you're wrong here, Well, George. I think I'm right. Well, I think, whichever, I think he's wrong too. Well, whichever website, where, I mean, where are you getting? What's your source? Me, <laughs> exactly. You're to, you're dead wrong on this. No, I, I don't think I am. Um, at the moment, I'm looking forward if, to this proof. If the season stopped today, the Predators would take on Vancouver. I mean, I'm sorry that that's the truth. Well, I'll have to uh, I'll have to do yeah. my research well, here. You do that. That won't take long. I want to. I want to prove you wrong so bad. Well, I, right I'm here. sure you do. Um, anyway, nobody wants to care on. about I'll, this. I'll, I'll find some proof here in a minute and read it to you. I'm sure you will. Yes. Uh, anyway, we've got uh, some live golf news. Rory McIlroy obviously was in the news. He said he plans to finish his career on the PGA Tour. He denied a published report by a London newspaper that he had been offered 850 million in an equity state state stake can't say that in the live golf league McElroy said neither he nor his agents have ever discussed a potential deal to lure him to live which is being financed by the pif of course so and McElroy said honestly don't know how these things get started i've never been offered a member uh from live and i've never contemplated going to live again i think i've made it clear over the past two years i don't think it's something for me so rory McElroy is not going to live that was obviously up in the air i believe him <laughs> he's talked a lot though he's t- he's talked a lot and i'm sure if that if that did happen and 850 million was thrown out there i'm sure he's like golly i shouldn't have been running my mouth like this you know That's current playoff yeah. matchups according to espn in the western conference vancouver would take on nashville well, I found this on BetMGM this well, morning. Well, wh- which one are you going to trust? The worldwide leader <laughs> or BetMGM? Basically, what this means is that nobody knows. Well, that, So why does okay, BetMGM yeah, have something different? Billy, I don't know. You would have to ask them. Well, you've I, got enough Preds friends. You should I'm know just, the actual I'm answer. I'm just reading you facts from the worldwide leader. That's not a fact, obviously. Well, no, apparently, if the season stopped at this moment, the Predators would take on Vancouver. By the way, whoever does does the odds after the loss last night has put it at no better than 60-40 that the Preds will play Vancouver. Well, good for them. Yeah. That'll be good. Yeah. So, 
take your facts and you don't want to play Dallas, do you? Not really. Yeah, I think no. that's what this comes down to. No, I, I mean I'm just I read you what the worldwide leader put. Are these there. feelings or facts? Both. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, Preds lose last night mm-hmm. against Pittsburgh. Their next Season game is stop today. They season's play over. Vancouver. Their next game <laughs> is probably Saturday or Sunday. Um, and, and you know, there's all kinds of crazy speculation about what dates and you know when do they come back to Nashville. You know, I, I've heard people tell me that Tim McGraw has a concert at Bridgestone next Thursday night. So <laughs> X that out as as a date of a potential home playoff game. Um, I guess just, they didn't think they'd be in the playoffs. The oh, Bridgestone I don't know. Arena. I mean, office. we'll just we'll wait and see. Uh, last piece of news here: the Rangers have announced that Jack Leiter, the number two overall yeah. pick in the 2021 MLB draft, former Vanderbilt pitcher will make his Major League debut on Thursday, the son of the legendary Al Leiter. And George isn't even paying attention. There's a well, B I've got coming. a B about to sting Kelly, me, this so. is a gym shoe operation right now. Straight gym shoe. And y'all are both cat fighting. We're, we're worried about the Canucks and the Dallas Stars, and until it finishes, nobody cares. And then George is about to go into an allergic reaction to I mean, a B. I mean, grow up, George. Oh, it's great to have you back. Kind of like having a hemorrhoid. And he's still he is so locked in on this B right now. Well, you'd be Are locked you, in on it too if it were your next Are door neighbor. You and now he's Are swinging you, at you it. Okay? Would yeah, you want to get it. stung by a bee? Just leave him alone and he'll leave you alone. Okay, exactly. Good point. Good point. Okay, we're done. <laughs> yeah, we're done. After the break, we'll go to Knoxville and Tony Basilio. Knoxville Sports Talk Show host will join us. I'm going to take him a couple of places that I'll bet you he never saw coming. This will be fun. Stick around. It was the most horrible experience that any mother could ever go through. I knew that I needed to get help. My friend, she immediately said, you need to call Bart Durham. And you guys were there within an hour. You guys are like family for us. Yeah, sure is nice to connect with the people that you're doing your best to help. As the trusted premier custom home builder in Middle Tennessee, Donnelly Timmons has over 20 years of experience in the industry. Whether you're looking to build your dream home or renovate your current home, their team will ensure that every client and every remodel is unique, luxurious, and completed on time within budget. Founders Dustin Timmons and Joey Donnelly have over 25 years of construction experience in the Nashville area. Together, they have completed projects in Forest Hills, Oak Hill, Green Hills, Franklin, and Brentwood. Dustin and Joey believe that communication is the most important aspect of all construction projects. Therefore, they personally manage each project themselves and are involved in job site activities on a daily basis. Their commitment to quality and integrity has earned them an outstanding reputation among their clients. Contact them to set an appointment for a free consultation or to view some of their completed projects. Give them a call at 615-456-7983 or log on to DonleyTimmons.com. I'm Watson Brown. I'm Kelly Holcomb. I'm Billy Derrick. We're the George Plaster Show. We've been Nashville's best sports talk for the last 30 years. And you know what? We still are. Catch us live weekdays from 2 to 4 p.m. Central Time in Nashville on YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook. Also, the podcast version is available on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Looking for more than just awards and trophies? Southern Trophy House is your one-stop solution. For over 60 years, their team has created lasting impressions with a personalized touch. 
from embroidery to screen printed apparel to corporate awards, signs, and name badges. They have everything you need to keep your brand shining bright. With their knowledgeable customer service team, you can relax as they create, produce, pack, and ship merchandise and awards on time and on budget. That includes etched crystal awards, custom cut acrylic, name badges, embroidered Richardson ball caps, banners, screen printed t-shirts, laser engraved Yeti cups, and knives. Recognize your hardworking team from Southern Trophy House, where they do their best to help you recognize your best. Located at 2705 Nolensville Pike in Nashville, give them a holler, 615-256-7295. Visit southerntrophy.com, Southern Trophy House, for all your personalization and recognition needs. We have late developments from Ken Dugan Field. Suddenly, when the bee approached Billy, then things really changed. He yeah. tried to swat him, and a bottle of water that did not have a top on it, uh, that would be this one, um, landed in my lap. And uh, so to say that we've taken on some water, uh, both figuratively and literally, yeah, this, How is, about that? this has been a disaster. Yeah. Let's go to Knoxville and say hello to Tony Basilio. He's ready and raring to go. Man, I've got a question for you in a minute that I'll guarantee you never saw coming. And I'll tell you what it is before I ask it. I mean, I'll, I'll let you know. But first, give me some reaction to Kentucky hiring the Pope. You know, I, I like that fan base because one minute they were ready to riot. <laughs> and some of those fans up there were evoking the Shiano Sunday deal that we had here where our fan base just said, no, we're not going to take it and had our own little tea party and turned around a hire. <laughs> right. And then their, their place, you know, there's a saying in, in the political world, which George, they call party politics. You know, you practice party politics. I don't know that I've ever seen it done to the extent that those people did the other day. I mean, that takes party politics to a new level. One minute, you're ready to riot. Three days later, the guy's a conquering hero. We have thousands of people trying to get in and see this guy. Was he healing diseases? I mean, what are we doing here? What are we freaking doing? I mean, I've seen a, I've seen a group of people that are sick with something. I mean, imagine if these people had had won something in recent years. What it look would it look like in there? You know, all kidding aside, though, I'm pretty happy for those people because I feel like they're kind of going to get Kentucky basketball back instead of what it's been, which is sort of hijacked under the uh, under the current or under John Calipari, because that one and done stuff not mixed with core players is really not what Kentucky basketball is all about. George, I think of our mutual friend, uh, Mark Griffin, who back in the day told me something that kind of stuck with me. Cause this isn't true about Tennessee basketball. Now he said, but he said, you know, Tony, the thing that makes Kentucky so unique is when you go up there in the off season, those guys are all hanging out with each other. Cause they're all like, you know, they, they love the place and they're, and they're about the place. Now you can't say that in recent years, but it's almost like there was a responsibility for being a Kentucky basketball player um, that existed before John Calipari got there. And uh, Calipari sort of ripped the guts right out of that from under that deal. So I think that's why those people overreacted to that hire uh, the way that they did. Everything I know, and I've watched BYU two or three times this year. He's a good basketball coach. Um, and I'm like you. I think they're taking their program back 
uh, from where it's been and getting it a little more, you know, uh, blue mist grassroots. And I think they're going to enjoy what's coming. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what, how much success this guy is going to have or not have. I had Jeff Goodman on my program yesterday who's been around this stuff for a long time, and sure. I respect Jeff's uh, you know, opinion. He does not think that Pope's going to be able to recruit in the waters that Calipari did. I'm not sure you have to, though, in this day and age. I mean, what you've got to do is you've got to find – people that can play your system and you still have to be able to defend uh and and look kentucky basketball is kentucky basketball he's going to win enough so he'll win there he'll do okay will he have the final four national championship success that you know predecessors have had i wouldn't bet on that but I do think it's a good story that Kentucky gets to feel like they get their basketball program back. And I do think that's worth something, George. I really do. Oh, I, I'm totally with you. So Goodman is really wired to all this. Does he think they have any shot to keep Reed Shepard? Um, I didn't, you know, I didn't ask him that because I don't think they do, George. I mean, the guy's a top five pick in the NBA draft. How, why would you come back? I mean, I, I'd ask Kelly Holcomb this. He's got a son that's an athlete. I have a son that played golf in college. One of my son's friends or acquaintance here locally, um, Caleb Surratt, was on Tennessee's golf team, and the Live Tour came to him and said, we'll give you $4 million guaranteed if you'll join us. Mm. And he said, where can I sign? I mean, to me, if you're talking about I'm a top five pick in the draft, that's um, – what is that like $45 million guaranteed? Oh. It's some crazy amount of money. Look, it's a boatload son. We can always go back to Kentucky games when you're 35 years old, you got the rest of your life for that. Go make your money. That's what I would tell them. There's no way I would risk it and come back if I were that kid. And I'm a sentimental and I love college sports as much as the next person, but the money at the next level has gotten so outrageous now that you almost have to take it. You're a lottery winner. Yeah. Okay, so here comes the question that you have no clue is coming. Maybe you've talked about it on your show. Then again, maybe you haven't. When the NBA went to the play-in game that, that's going to go on tonight, yeah. tomorrow night, and then on Friday, I'll admit I thought it was a stupid idea. Mm -hmm. And yet what it has done, it has increased in the weeks leading up to the into the regular season playoff interest. It's gotten, you know, it, it it's amazing what that's done. Mm -hmm. And the games over the next three nights will probably be blood and guts kind of games because it's winner take all stuff. Mm -hmm. So here's my question. Your Philadelphia Flyers are sitting there in a battle with three other teams. Mm -hmm. Only one of them is going to get to the promised land of the playoffs. Should the NHL copycat and go to this play-in thing? You know, it's a great question because the Flyers are in this. And by the way, thank you to the Nashville Predators for absolutely not trying last night. I just want to say that out loud. <laughs> um, I really appreciate that. Um, all kidding aside, you know, the thing that separates the NHL from the NBA, if anything does, and maybe that would be a good idea, a one-and-done type thing. Because mm -hmm. I think as college fans, we're fascinated by the one-and-done model when done on the pro level. So why not do that when you can do it? You know, like that, that early season tournament that the NBA had this year that a lot of people panned, I think in time that will pick up momentum. Um, if there's one thing I would do to change that, though, is I would take the final eight teams and I would put them in the same place in the same weekend and let that thing have a real tournament feel instead of just a couple teams out there in Vegas like they did this time around. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, George, why not? I mean, the Flyers are involved in a thing tonight where we're going to be scoreboard watching with Montreal and the Red Wings. Uh, the Flyers will play Washington, and then we'll be scoreboard watching – uh, with the uh, Pittsburgh Penguins and the Islanders tomorrow night. 
Flyers need several things to go well because, of course, it's a Philadelphia team sport, which means they had to have an eight-game losing streak uh, right there at the end of the season. Because what would Philadelphia sports be without a you know an eight-game losing streak? <laughs> okay, but I am me, for that. Yeah. Okay. Let me bring Kelly in. To I have this. a question for him. I have a question for him. Okay, you you start it then. Kelly, Our also Harry, unmute your Harry. mic if you're able to. Kelly, buenas noches. <laughs> buenas noches. How we doing? How we doing? Muy bien. You just you just muted yourself again. Oh, there you go. Speaking there you go, of Kelly. gym shoe operation. Kelly, how does gym it feel shoe. to be? How's it feel to be dialed in? All right, Kelly. Here's a question for you. I got to ask yes, you sir. today on the air. Actually, I was talking with the great Adam Sparks. We were talking about the Herring kid that just went into the portal, whose younger uh, brother, about to ask you that. Yeah. whose younger brother yeah. is a younger brother is going to be a star defensive end here, um, but doesn't figure to play a ton this year. How concerned could should Tennessee fans be that one Herring went into the portal and another one might follow him? What 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 say you as somebody who knows that family? I don't know, man. I've just, I just heard that this morning, Tony, and I was going to ask you about that. Like, what were the circumstances behind that? I mean, is, has Tennessee gotten that good? I mean, Elijah started all those games. Now, I know he, I know he came in after somebody got hurt last year, but he played pretty well. Uh, you know, I've always, you know, I, I love the Herring boys. Now, don't get me wrong, but I've always yeah. said like the the one thing that Elijah lacks is speed. He he he's not a he can't run. Right. And when you when you when you get to the SEC, man, you've got to be able to pick him up and put him down. And that's always been his deal. Now his brother plays a different spot. And I right. and I actually think and this is pretty bad, but I actually think that, you know, they wanted the younger brother and they went after the older brother. And mm-hmm. I, I don't know if that's correct. I'm not sure if that's correct, but that's how the game's played now. But Elijah, I thought, did a pretty good job for him last year. So I don't know, Tony. I, I, I they are awfully close, and I would not be surprised if Elijah goes somewhere, and I would not be surprised if Caleb followed him. I, that would not surprise me, but it also wouldn't surprise me if Caleb stayed put. Uh, I, I don't know. I just, you know, Caleb's got some things that he's got to work on, but there, there's certain things that he has that nobody else has, and he's got that arm length. He can get beat, and he can grab people. And right. if he's gotten bigger, which I know he has, he may be able to rush the passer, which I think that would be his forte. Right. So I, I don't know, but I could see it going either way. But I, I was going to ask you, like, what what was – like, for as much as Elijah played last year, what was the deal? I mean, I, I heard I, I, that they well, just told him that he needed to go into the portal, and I, no, I don't understand no, why. I, no, they were, they were surprised by it because, look. Oh, really? Okay. Uh, Adam, Adam Sparks said that I, he had a list of eight guys that he's already written portal stories on for, you know, if and when they go in. He already has something written, which is smart, really? you know, like a template. You know what I mean? Like this yeah. person had this many tackles and blah, blah, blah. And that way you kind of work ahead. Right. So, which is what a smart beat writer would do. And then he's anticipating, he's looking at the roster. He said he was not one of the eight. He said really? he was not one of the eight guys that I thought when I looked at the roster, okay, well, who's going to go into the portal? He was Tennessee's leading tackler last year. Yeah. Now, Herring, what's occurred though is, Tennessee has changed linebackers coaches. The new linebackers coach's first media opportunity at Tennessee was asked, what's important to you? And he said, well, what's important to me is speed, speed, and speed. Now, uh-huh. Kelly, it does not take a rocket scientist to know. And the thing about the Herring kid is, is that, and we were talking about this on the air today, is he's not, it's not like he's a bad football player or a guy that couldn't play at this level and they ran him off. They, like that, Because that does occur at sec schools no what happened is he's just a guy that can't play in space and you said it and, and there are oh. linebackers in the modern game today especially in tennessee system and middle linebacker calls for you to play in space and so when that's not your forte adam made a great point he said i could see him going to a big 10 school yeah. playing in or you know playing in a place like that where they want you inside where they right. want you to be a tough between the tackler guy that'll get people on the ground and you know a no nonsense meat and potatoes like when like when we were coming up he'd have been a perfect middle linebacker he would have fit perfectly because you don't you know today today it's so hybrid you know the things you're asking of linebackers right. today and that's what happened to him but the the question now becomes that we're all going to watch here is 
is Caleb going to follow him? You know, and they're, yeah. they're close. Um, you know, and, and, and Adam said something interesting, which is maybe what happens is the next school that takes uh, Elijah says, Hey, let's, let, how about if we put together a deal for your brother, you and your brother? Cause if you're a big 10 school and you can add both those guys and you have to like overspend off your budget to do it, that'd be really smart. Cause Tennessee thinks the world of Caleb Harry. The problem with him is that he's got a guy in front of him this year who in Pierce, who's going to be a high draft pick in the yeah. NFL and who's a premier player. So, right. you know, there's only so much oil in the ground from that perspective, but I don't think this is one of those deals where they said to him, hey, son, you've got to hit the bricks. I think it's a deal where the kid was intelligent enough to look at this situation and say, hey, you know what? There's no room at the end for me. I mean, this this guy here is better than me. This guy here for what they want to do now. This guy's better. This guy's better. This guy better. You know, he's probably third or fourth on the depth chart, third or fourth at the best uh, on the depth chart right now. For, for what they're looking for at his possession. Well, see, that's the same thing that happened to my son. I mean, that, that's what people don't understand, too. You get a coaching staff, and he, he just had a coach. He, he had a coaching change. Yeah. And the coach, obviously the coach before him was the one that recruited him, right. brought him there, and then this new guy, like he, he probably saw, the, like you said, he probably saw the writing on the wall. That's what happened right. to my son at Troy. Like he, he, he got the trust of the old coaching staff, but the new coaching staff, like, when you're getting one or two reps a day, you can't show anything. And it, it's just – it's you can see the writing on the wall. And obviously, Elijah thought that. But I can definitely see – because they are close. And, you know, their mom has kept them close. And yeah. uh, I, I can see Elijah going somewhere and Caleb following because I, I'm sure that she don't want to be split between the two schools. And, and I think they would probably have enough leverage that they yeah. could probably get that done. You know? I don't know. We'll, we'll see. I'm I'm calling on you to for that not to happen. I, I told the show today that I would lean on your relationship with those folks to. Okay. All right. Kinda, I'll do it. I'll help you. Oh, very good. To just kind of uh, um, really get into the importance for the young man to stay in one place. But for what happened to your son is so relatable because and people wonder how that works. Well, it's kind of like this. You have a job, okay? Anybody listen to me? And all of a sudden, there's a change in that GM, general manager position, or whatever you want to call that, your president of your company, whatever it is. All of a sudden, you have that first meeting, and you walk in there, and you go, I ain't work for that SOB. There's no way. Yeah. Or, yeah. or, or that person's not going to like me. They gave you the side eye or whatever it is. Whatever it is, you know? And at that point, you're, if you're smart, you're filling out your resume. You're filling out your resume. There's nothing wrong with that. There's a lot of productive people that have to go to other companies uh, that were really good at their jobs because there was a change in uh, management, like you're talking about. <coughs> so, <coughs> so, 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 Tony. <laughs> so, Tony. Well, save it, George. That save it. We don't need to hear hit, all that. That one hit close to home. <laughs> Tony, Tony what was yeah. your... Uh, what were your takeaways uh, from the orange and white game? I mean, I, I saw where they only could have 10,000 fans because they're doing all these renovations, yeah. but what, what were your takeaways? I mean, I saw where they've got a deep, they, a deep receiver core. I mean, how did Nico play? I know the backup played pretty well. How, how, you know, what were your assessments of the game? I just think it's so far from football. I mean, I hate to be this person, but I don't yeah, draw. Yeah. I don't understand why they even play those games anymore. To uh, me, to me, if I'm King, you take your orange and white game, which is the old model, because by that point, you've already done everything you wanted to do. And what you do with that game is you turn it into a fan day and you have an autograph deal and you take the money and you give it to the NIL and you charge people 20 bucks to get in or whatever it is. And you run 100,000 people through your gates in a day and you have autographs and you have this and you have that and you have a celebration for the fans. But I mean, for God's sakes, don't get somebody hurt. I mean, they were throwing against air out there. It looked like it looked like seven on seven football to me. They weren't tackling anybody. I mean, no offense, but for me, it's hard to draw anything from that other than Tennessee's better. Uh, they're how they do this year and how close they get to a playoff. People think it's going to be quarterback play. No, quarterback plays me fine. It's going to be dependent upon how good's that back seven. We were talking about the linebacking core. Can they take another step? 
and then their secondary. Because, and and I'm of the I'm of the prove it deal when it comes. Like we have people on our fan base. People call my show. And, well, it's fixed. What's fixed? Well, the I mean, the, you know, the secondary's fixed, and because we recruited, and 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 you know, the the linebackers are better. Uh, okay. You have to show me that on the field. That's right. That's where I'm at. You can talk, talk all day. Cheap. Talk yeah, all day talk long about cheap. Yeah. That, especially at this level. Because one thing is for sure, if you have weaknesses at this level, that's like the Herring kid last year. If you have weaknesses at this level, they're going to find it and they're going to exploit you. Like they had him in pass coverage all year last year. Oh. Opponents did once they figured it out, you know? And you know that. Oh yeah, that was the uh, and you said it earlier about uh, about Elijah. I mean, he he does not play well in space, man. And that was what that was the thing yeah. that I was I was concerned about when he going to UT. Like he like like Jordan James, the kid at Oregon, uh, when we yeah. played Oakland up here, man, he had him one on one, and Jordan James made him look foolish a couple of times. And I'm like, golly, man, that just that just shows you kind of the difference. So kind of changing, kind of changing. This will be my last deal, but I, I saw a little bit. You know, talking about baseball, and y'all are number four. But how's Drew Beam? I saw where uh, he had a really, really nice performance the other day, and kind of willed the team to win. How's he been playing? He said three in a row, man. I mean, he is. Uh, you know, he's a guy that kind of took his lumps early in the season. In this league, who hasn't? That's pitching. I mean, guys are teeing off on pitching in this league. Um, but he's bounced back. He's had three solid starts in a row. Tennessee's a Kentucky this week. Midway point of the season, Kentucky being 15, 15 and one was not on my sing, single card, Kelly. I'll have to be honest with you, but uh, it's going to be a really hard fought series up there. Kentucky does what they do and they do it well. And Tennessee just finds a way under Tony Vitello. If you'd have told me a couple weeks ago that that team would be uh, sitting there at 11 and four at this point in the season in this league, I'd have said there's no way in the world that's true. But that's where they are. And um, they just find ways to win under him. I, I, I don't know. I, I, I can't figure it out other than they know what they're doing and they've got a lot of, uh, they got a lot of bats. They can really hammer the baseball. This team can. They absolutely mash the baseball. And, and tell oh, me mash what, it. For, for me, can they go up there and, and mash? I mean, Kentucky's good. They got three really good starting pitchers. How do they go up there and, and, and do that? I mean, do you think, this is, I don't know if you've read up on Kentucky or have had any yeah. Kentucky guests on your show yet, but yeah. what have you heard about Kentucky and can Tennessee go up there and 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 sweep like they did against LSU? I'm now that's probably out no. of the equation, but no. I mean, how how do they win this series, I guess? How do they go up there and do it? They're going to have to play really well defensively. You know, uh, Mingione, the coach for Kentucky's philosophy, and he's verbalized this, <clears throat> he likes Josh Heupel. He puts his team together with the goal of putting pressure on a defense, whether that's running the bases uh, aggressively, bunning the ball when you have to. But there is a misconception about Kentucky that they only play the inside game. They were down six runs to Auburn in a game over the weekend, and they hit seven home runs on the, in that series, and they hit mm. two big ones to get back in that game. So they, they came for multiple runs down on the road, a sweep on the road, of of Auburn so you know the the truth is this big ballpark is gonna be interesting because Tennessee's got a great great outfield defensively uh Dylan Dryling is an excellent player he's a stud Tony Tony was doing a um uh speech a couple weeks ago like a private deal and he and he ripped me during the speech <laughs> and he said you know do you guys know who this Tony Basilia and people say yeah yeah he Tony said well you know, I can't go on this guy's show without him mentioning that Dylan Dryling uh, sat on my bench last year and we hardly played him. <laughs> hey, Tony, <laughs> Dylan Dryling sat on your bench last year and you hardly played him. Why? I mean, just I'm just asking for a friend. So the, the truth is he is an absolute stud and he's a great fielder. They're very good in center field. They're very good in right field. And, you know, Billy, that ballpark is a lot bigger than the one the balls play in. Mm -hmm. And so that's going to be tracking balls down, running balls down in the gap is going to be a big deal this weekend. These two teams are both really good uh, defensively. I think Kentucky's infield's better than Tennessee's. And that's my concern. My concern is they're going to bunt the ball, put the ball on the ground. They're going to force Tennessee to make decisions, make plays, 
run, put pressure on the Vols. Um, but look, when you have the offense Tennessee has, that plays anywhere. Uh, my goal, if I'm Tennessee, is to get two out of three this weekend. If I get one out of three, I live with it. That's that's my goal, though, to get two out of three. Tony, let me ask this before we run. <laughs> Barring collapses, are both of those programs guaranteed to host Super Regional if they get there? George, I don't know. You know, Billy's better, more, more um, versed on it. Versus, you got to win 18 games in this league if you want to host, is what I've always yeah. been told. 18 is a magic number. If you would get to 18 wins, you'll host a Super Regional out of this league. Tennessee's sitting there, like I said before, uh, I guess they're 11 and 11 and 4 right now, I guess is the number. Yeah. Is that right? Or no, 11 and 5. Was it 15 games? So it's 15. 10 and uh, 11 and 5, I think it's the number. Yeah. Anyway, 10 and 6, whatever the number is. Um, so they've got some work to do to get to 18 and you know, they've got the lights on their schedule of uh, at Florida, which I know Florida is not very good right now at Kentucky at uh, Nashville at Vanderbilt. And look, Vandy's kind of scuffling around right now. Mm -hmm. Vanderbilt will be damn ready when Tennessee rolls in there. You know it. And I know it. And, and Billy knows it. And everybody knows it for what has happened the last couple of years. I think Vanderbilt's lost what seven or eight straight to Tennessee, Billy. Is that the number? It's some uh, crazy I think it's number. eight. It's up to eight now. Billy there's plans no way to be up on the those. roof with a flag. Um. <laughs> I mean, there's just no way. Vanderbilt's too proud. There's no way. You know, you say that we. That's what a lot of people were saying last year. You know, after the sweep a couple of years ago at home, and they said, "Well, yeah. Tennessee's down." And we talked about it last year. Oh yeah. But like you said, Tony Vitello finds a way. And you got to give credit to him. When, when when, when's that series here? May 11th, uh, or May 10th through 12th. So. Wow. Yeah, like okay. a month. It's month away. Fun. Will Vandy uh, write the ship by then, Billy? Yeah, they got a couple. They got Florida at home this weekend, and then they got Mississippi State, a couple of teams that have dropped from the rankings. Um, but those teams are still good. Um, they actually play Lipscomb here today. I know Tennessee has had That's trouble. Fun. With yeah, so it'll be fun. But, yeah, I think they should, Tony. It's hard to sweep anybody. Uh, but anytime you can, like Tennessee just did against LSU, it's just yeah. huge. So I, I think I think they will, and I think they'll have some confidence heading into that. But I think for both teams, no matter how they're playing, it'll be it'll be fun. I love uh, that Lipscomb team. You guys have that's beautiful behind you there, and I yeah, love that. It's team. a nice they play, park. Uh, they play a really clean version of the game. I like watching them. They got a good head coach in Jeff Forey, yeah. and he's about 10, 15 minutes away from joining yeah. us. Tell people how they can hear you. Yeah, tclub.team is where our uh, blog is every day. Again, tclub.team. And, you know, guys, I, I just love what I do and get a chance to do it every day. And uh, this is a great time of the year. This transfer portal in basketball is sheer madness. Who's coming, who's going. Sometimes on the same day, the same guys yes. are coming and going. Um, I don't know if you saw the story at Louisville today, but there's more things going on. Uh, and by the way, did you guys see the story about Keyshawn Lawrence? Did you guys see this? I saw that. It was, a different, it was a different Keyshawn Lawrence. It yeah. wasn't. <laughs> so everybody so, thought Keyshawn Lawrence was entering the portal again after transferring yeah. from Oklahoma to Ole Miss. But it was another Keyshawn Lawrence who was a actually. A walk-on, already... George, by the same name. Uh, what are the need. odds of that? <laughs> yeah, what if, that's all we need in the transfer portal 2024. Two kids with the same name. God. Playing at the same program. Confusing <laughs> to say the least. Tony, appreciate, see you next you week. Guys. Thank you. Thank you Thanks, guys. Tony. Okay. Great stuff from Tony, as always. After the break, I'm going to ask these guys the same question I asked Tony about play in games. Stay with us. Hit After Hit has become the baseball store in Tennessee. They have over 1,000 different models of gloves and over 1,500 wood bats. They also have several Iron Mike pitching machines as well as a Hit Tracks machine. If they don't have it, you probably don't need it. We're proud to call Hit After Hit the official shirt provider of the Plaster and Friends Celebrity Bowling Night.
Forget the fact that Sir Speedy Music City is owned by my BGA classmate James Warren. Their work stands on its own merit. James and his staff do incredible work, as evidenced by the huge banners at the Plaster and Friends Celebrity Bowling Night. If you're looking for quality to help your marketing and business communications, and you want it at a reasonable price, these are your folks. Call them at 615-832-9511 or go to print at sirspeedymusiccity.com and be sure to tell them Plaz sent you. Over the years, more men have started to seek help for hormone deficiencies and imbalances. And Dr. Jeffrey Lodge and wife Daphne, along with their experienced staff, give men the treatment required to improve their quality of life, improve your immune system, energy level, cognitive function, and more. There's no better time to achieve a healthy lifestyle. What are you waiting for? Give Cool Springs MD a call today for an appointment at 615 615- 486-3458 or visit the website coolspringsmd.com For over 35 years, Wilson Bank & Trust has been committed to providing customized banking solutions to help individuals, families, and businesses in Tennessee achieve their goals. As your full-service community bank, we are proud to offer loans with competitive rates, local decision-making, and fast, friendly service from our experienced lenders. No matter where you are on your financial journey, Wilson Bank & Trust is ready to help you take the next step. Visit your nearest Wilson Bank & Trust office or online at wilsonbank.com to get started today. Member FDIC, Equal House. Housing lender. Convenience and value, two words that we expect when we do business. Our goal at JHA Company is to deliver just that, both to our school partners and to our customers. Whether you're purchasing photos, yearbooks, class jewelry, letter jackets, school spirit wear, or senior graduation products, we strive to make the experience easy, convenient, and cost effective. Find out more at jhacompany.com or call 615-867-6345 for more information. JHA, one source, one company. Star Physical Therapy was established in 1997 with one great mission, to serve. If you're hurting, don't wait to receive physical therapy. You don't need a referral to see their physical therapist and early morning and evening appointments are available. Make the call to 615-673-1420 and get rid of that pain. Star Physical Therapy, the official health provider of Football Friday. Okay, so we welcome all of you back on what is a beautiful Tuesday afternoon. Boy, the weather could not be better. We'll give you a little bit of a shot here. I'll get my little butt out of the way a little and let you see more of Ken Dugan Field, which will be packed to the gills tonight. Okay, I asked the question to Tony Cotillio. <laughs> what, what is that Danielle again? Oh, we got a gym shoe operation. Oh, what in the world was that, Kelly? <laughs> I don't know what what happened. What did happen? I don't know. What do you mean what happened? I don't know. I don't know what happened. What happened? <laughs> the wife came oh. in and asked me a question, man. I got I got a, we got a problem right now with something. Uh-oh. So <laughs> is that what it was? Uh it may have been. So, <laughs> so I'm going to ask this question. Uh, when I when I brought it up to Tony, the idea of the NHL going play in game like the NBA, what was y'all's first reaction? Man, I, I mean, I don't think you need to do much with the NHL playoffs right now. But now, other than what we've talked about the the weird seating and and how they do that, how they figure out who's matched up with who. I yeah, think they need they, to fix they that. They do need to rethink that. But I don't know that they need that. The NBA, that almost felt like a, an extra effort to to put more eyes on it because they know 
the NBA playoffs are not highly viewed. Well, I mean, I th- the, the other thing is that in the NHL, the eight can beat the one. That's true. I, I don't think I, it's I think, really possible in the when's NBA. When's the last time that happened in the it's been NBA? been a long time. Yeah. Even more so, think about this. When the Preds made the run as an eight seed, they swept the one, the Blackhawks. Yeah. That would never happen in the in the NBA. No. No. I don't see that, that yeah. that's kind of my that's kind of my feeling too, George. I mean it, it's different in the NHL because y'all y'all talk, y'all kind of educated me uh about you know the eight seed can beat the one seed pretty easy, but in the NBA it's a little different. I, I do like playing games though, because I think Everything's on the line. Everything's sensationalized. You know, every free throw is – there's some anxiety to all that. There's some – there's some uh, – just some pressure that you don't really see. in the You know, the NBA in regular season is – it's hard to watch. We, we know that. It's hard to watch. But when you start having a chance to go in the postseason – and you put that playoff game out there and everything is all down to one game. I think there's a lot of productivity in that game. And these guys know if we can get past this, we still can go on. And if we get hot, you never know what's going to happen. But I, I, I like I kind of like to play in games. For me, there is a better level of effort in the NHL in the regular season. And at times yeah. by a mile. Absolutely. There are too yeah. many times. I try to watch an NBA regular season game where I'm like, this is a joke. Yeah. Now, as they get to April, it gets a lot more serious. At times, it gets into sumo wrestling. Um, yeah. And that's that's a problem the NBA's tried to fix. It, I just, when, when it first came out, I thought it was a stupid idea. And yet, it has turned out to be a big winner for... Um, for the NBA. Yes, it has. We ready for stat of the day? Let's do it. And then we'll bring uh, Jeff Forehand in here. Stat of the day is brought to you by John English Antique Sports and Cards out in Shelbyville, Tennessee. That's where you can find them. Here we go. And maybe we'll get uh, get Coach Forehand in here on this stat of the day. In other words, we're going to make him lose with us. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Here we go. The NBA play-in tournament, what we were just talking about, is tonight. Since its inception in 2021, which three teams have made the most appearances? George, just name one if you want. Kelly, um, I think one of them's Minnesota Timberwolves. Uh, I think that would be a good guess. You like that one? I do. Okay, you throwing anything out there? I, I mean, since 2021... Uh, it's the Lakers are in it tonight. Have the Lakers been? Is this the first time the Lakers have been in a playoff playing game, or were they in a couple of years ago? They had another playing you know, game. I'm not that's sure. A good question. He might, you know, he might be right about that. That the Lakers are one of them. Anyway, go ahead and show us what's in there. Lakers, good Hawks, Lord, I didn't get any of them, and Pelicans. So that's that's what we got. I was a big offer. Yep. Okay. Nice. Big night tonight here on the Lipscomb University campus. Let's get the hat. No, let's let's give it some good pub there. That is Jeff Forehand. He is the head baseball coach at Lipscomb University. I've known Jeff for God, we're not gonna say how long. Thank you for hosting us. This is terrific. Well, you know, beautiful day. You know, we've got a, you know, should have a good crowd tonight. Should have a, uh, you know, perfect day to, to, uh, to showcase Lipscomb University. And I appreciate you guys doing the show from here and the whole deal. But uh, always grateful to, to be on with you guys. Absolutely. Listen, <laughs> tell me how you got Vandy to agree to come over here. Because in recent years, it's been out at the Sound Stadium. And I guess there's a change, at least this year. Well, last year when we played out there, it, it rained out after oh, I after three innings, and yeah. you know, and and Tim just said, you know, let's just when we make this up, both of us for whatever reason didn't have a game the following Tuesday, so we we replayed the game on Tuesday over at their place, and he just said, let's just instead of trying to get it all set back up down there, you know, he was gracious enough to play over there this last year, and then he said, and we'll just come over and play you guys at, at your place next year, which I thought was really gracious, so. 
grateful for uh, for Tim for doing that. So talk to me about <clears throat> at your level. You got Notre Dame here a year ago for a three game series that went over huge. Doesn't hurt that you won two out of three. And now you get Vandy over here. What does it do for a program when one of the big boys comes to you? Well, I think, you know, Notre Dame in, in their right mind, you know, they it's a little bit warmer. So they, they right. made the they made the trick, you know, for the warm weather. You know, any time that uh, you know we can get a, a power five on campus, I think it's a big deal. Uh, next year we uh, we have Kentucky and West Virginia for a three game series at home, so that's uh, that's a big deal. So anytime we have that opportunity to, to do it, you know, our our school does a great job of uh, of showcasing it when we do have those opportunities, and everybody's worked hard today to to make sure that, you know, we can accommodate what we hope is going to be a good crowd. So is it just simply the big boys wanting to get out of the freezing cold and get to some level of warmer climate? Yeah, that's what it normally is when we get, when we get though, we had Ohio State here a few years ago and, you know, just those opportunities for them to, to play in a little bit warmer. And as well, us Nashvillians know, sometimes February 15th is not warm, but no. uh, we're going to keep fooling them if they want to keep coming. Okay, now Kelly Holcomb, <laughs> is with us from Murfreesboro. Kelly, if you've got something, fire it. If you don't, no problem. I was just thinking, like the uh, a couple of years ago, you went up to uh, you went up to UT and you, you guys beat UT and they were really good that year. And uh, how much different of an atmosphere, especially being at home with a with an SEC school school that's right across town that's had so much success, but like like how much anticipation or how much do the kids get involved in this or is it just another baseball game? Well, you like to just say it's another game, you know, but when you're playing a, you know, team that's year in and year out, top top 10 in the country and they're coming to your place, that just doesn't happen, doesn't happen all the time. And, you know, I think that, uh, you know, if you ask them and we try to treat it like it's another game, but, you know, I do think that, uh, you know, all these guys that are on our team, they had aspirations at one point to, to play on a Power 5 team. And I don't think, uh, I like to think now that they've been at Lipscomb, they wouldn't trade it for the world, but, you know, they all wanted that opportunity back when uh, their rec- recruiting days were happening. And, you know, we've got a lot of those guys that, that have been to the Power Five and back and bounced back to us. So, again, we can we can, uh, we can can talk about it all we want to. But I do think it's a, you know, it has a little bit more of a special quality to it than, uh, than a regular Tuesday game. But, again, heck, a regular Tuesday game is winning a college baseball game against a Power Five or even a mid-major on Tuesday, Friday, Saturday, or Sunday is a hard – a hard thing, but uh, just grateful for, like we said earlier, that uh, that Tim and, and 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 his crew that agreed to, to come over here and do this because he for sure doesn't have to. It just shows what kind of a what kind of a class act he is. So, so uh, you, you seem like kind of an old school guy, and with the way that the college landscape has changed, obviously we talk a lot about football and basketball, but how, how has the college landscape changed for you in, in baseball? I know that. I know that y'all go out and y'all used to get a but y'all still get a lot of guys from JUCO, but is it how different is it with the transfer portal era? And what are your thoughts on that? Well, we we might need a whole nother show for uh, for that, <laughs> but it's uh, actually I was just in the inside talking to one of the basketball coaches about it just just a few minutes ago before I came out here, and you know it has changed it. And you're right, I am an old school guy, and I guess I yearn for the days of you know how it used to be where. You know, we just, you know, everybody just laced them up and and we played. But, you know, nowadays it's like, I, and honestly, it's hard for for me or any other mid-major coach to to tell a kid that it, that he didn't get a good deal when he's getting six figures and school paid for and his living expenses paid for and his eating paid for. And, you know, I, it's just hard for me to say that, man, you shouldn't you shouldn't do that because that's in my heart of hearts. That's a that's a great opportunity for for any kid but uh you know the worst thing about it is that if we if we get a freshman in here and he plays too good then he's got that option to go on to the power five and we get a freshman in here that needs to develop and he's playing behind like you said one of those junior college guys or transfers guys that we have and then he's not getting to play as quickly as he wants then he leaves so the 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 happy meeting of trying to keep them here is really really a difficult thing and um you know, I think, you know, we're dealing with it with our basketball team right now with, with uh, you know, two or three guys moving on. And, again, good deals for them, but t- bad deals for us. Same thing, you know, down the street with Casey and those guys at, at Belmont. So, you know, I, I think it's just the, 
you know, the rules make it to where it, it is what it is. And that, that statement, sometimes I don't really enjoy it, but you know, it is what it is. And I, I hate that, that we're, that the rules are like they are to put kids in that position, but it's just really difficult for, for me to tell a kid that that's not a, a good deal when they get that opportunity. And this, this will be my last question. Uh, you know, you know, everybody's seen the movie Moneyball and, and Brad Pitt on there and with Billy Bean and all the analytics. Are you an analytics guy or are you a kind of field guy? Because you, you seem, well, you see, you know, you're an old school guy. But and I know analytics comes into play on some of these things. And, and I've never been an analytics guy. I don't know. But what, what, what are your thoughts on the analytics of the game? Well, we've had to, you know, we've had to invest some money in in that. And again, I'm I am an old school guy. I would prefer just to, like I said, lace them up and play. But uh, you know, we have dove in. You know, we've dived into that a little bit with uh, with we got one of our graduate assistant is fabulous, and he does a a wonderful job at helping us with the scouting reports and all of the, you know, the the information that we can have, you know, on all the teams that we play. But you know, the analytical part of it, you can't. I think I don't think you can ignore it because. I think it's got to be a blend now of, 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 you know, the old school way and the new school way. So I'm, uh, I'm happy that, uh, that we've got some guys helping, helping the old ball coach figure those things out. So uh, we got a good a crack staff that helps us with that. Coach, uh, this field is beautiful. I mean, it looks awesome. And obviously we were talking to Coach Brian Ryman earlier about, about the fence and, you know, the new lacing in it and everything. But the name of it, Ken Dugan, his grand is it his grandson correct that's on the team now? Yes. Okay, uh, Will, Will. So Will Dugan obviously went to the academy. Now he's here. What does that mean? And and what was that process like of getting him? I don't know if it was hard or easy, but well, what's it like having him on the team and also just having another Dugan? Well, unfortunately, he's been injured since he's been here, so he's trying to con- continue to get back. But you know, Coach Dugan goes way back to to my dad, and you know, my dad was a if people don't know my dad was a coach around here for you know, 30, 40 years and him and coach Dugan were, you know, friends and kind of did it the same way. And, you know, coach Dugan, you know, I played down the street at Belmont and I wasn't good enough. He, I wasn't good enough for coach Dugan to recruit here. Um, but, uh, <laughs> so I went down the street and played at Belmont, but, uh, you know, from, from Mike, Will's dad, you know, co- coaches, uh, coach's son played here. We've been friends since, you know, God, for 25 years. And, and therefore we'll have the opportunity to come over and play is really special. And actually, um, you know the number twenty is retired, but if you notice, Will wears number twenty. Um, I heard about that. We yeah. uh, we talked about that, you know, with uh, with uh, Will's grandma, and she agreed to to allow him to wear it. So once he's finished wearing it, it won't nobody will wear it anymore. Really that cool. Is, that is a very cool <laughs> That's story. That's awesome. So tell me this: on one hand, you'd love nothing better than to throw all your eggs into beating a Vanderbilt. But at this time of the year, you got conference play, and that's where it really matters. So, how do you go about pitching them tonight? Well, if if you had any suggestions, I, I would need to know. But uh, you know, uh, we we put ourselves in a in, in a difficult spot earlier in the year on Tuesday. We 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 kind of spin our bullpen a little bit more than we should have. You know, we we pitched some guys. You know, maybe instead of one or two innings, we pitched them two or three innings, and we could see some you know, some repercussions from that on the weekend. So, yeah. you know, tonight will be a, you know, will be a kind of a, in your terms, a Johnny Hole staff, uh, <laughs> you know, one of those, uh, you know, we'll, we'll try to that. hopefully we can, uh, we can trick them enough to where we can, uh, you know, bring guys in and out, but hopefully our, you know, we can get down to, if we can get it to the end of the game and still have our, you know, our, our, our number one and two, three bullpen arms available, you know, everybody's going to get some work tonight, but probably won't get overworked like we did earlier in the, in the year. You've had some great moments here, and sadly for you, a couple of them have forced you to come on radio shows that I've done. (laughs) Um, How close are you to having another one of those kind of moments toward the end of May? You know, right now, you know, we started off really slow, and as as fans can see, I mean, we we had the majority of our offense back. We we lost a bulk of our pitching, but we we uh, we had the offense back. So, you know, first five weeks of the season we we just didn't play up to par and the last three we've been playing better and i'm we're trending in the right direction so i uh i'm i'm hopeful for another magical run you know toward the end of it you know like you said the the weekends are what's most important um you know but uh, coach corbin told me a long time ago that the only the number one thing for all college baseball teams is you have to qualify for your tournament 
if you don't qualify for your tournament, you don't have a chance to do anything, right. anything else. So a number one go every year is to qualify for the tournament. Obviously, everybody wants to be the champion, the regular season champion, and we're still shooting for that. But qualifying for our tournament is a, is another goal as well. And if we can get to that, put ourselves in a position, you know, like, you know, we, you guys, all the listeners know as well that, you know, baseball is a tournament game. And, you know, if you get hot and, you know, in, in the end of May and win three or four games in a row, it, it don't really matter what happened, you know, prior to that. So I think we are – we're a lot closer than we were at the beginning of the season because I think we're playing a lot better. But uh, we'll be challenged tonight to see if we can we can keep up with, uh, you know, as everybody knows, one of the premier programs in the country. Last thing I want to ask you about. You know that our mutual friend and a member of your staff, Brian Ryman, approached me about this several weeks ago. And Brian – Brian has sort of a magical touch in certain things like PR and and the the banquet you all have put on over the years. I mean, you have had some heavyweight names that have come in here in the winter for your banquets. How in the world do you all do that? It's all him. I mean, it, it, I can't take any credit for it. He is tirelessly working on that. He's tirelessly working on everything behind the scenes to make our to make our program special and and you know special for the guys that are in it, hopefully special for the guys that are coming to it and then for the city. I mean, we just we want to be able to to put our best foot forward, but you know, Brian Ryman does a lot of things and he's 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 one of the main reasons why we're successful and I think if you if you know him and everybody oh, else that does absolutely. know him knows that, but for people that don't know it Brian Ryman is one special human being, and um, I'm just been blessed for all these years that he's uh, he's stuck with the old ball coach because we uh, <laughs> we've been we've been best buddies ever since uh, ever since that you know for 18 years when you work together and hang out together it's like we're we're as tight as they come so I'm I'm definitely blessed that uh, that he's a bison and chooses to stay one. Did you order up this weather or did he? Wow, I uh, I'm sure he did because he's uh he's pretty special. But I do want to say one more thing. Uh, uh, Will Blaylock is throwing the first pitch out tonight. He played for us and I think he finished in 15, if I get that correct. Um, and he had a, a bad ATV accident two Novembers ago, and uh, has worked his way back to to health. And he's uh finally we we've asked him. You know, he just finally felt ready to be able to do it. He's going to be out here tonight with uh with all of his with his family and and friends and former teammates and, you know, just an opportunity for him. He hadn't been back on the field and he's been practicing to throw the first pitch out. So if you guys get a chance to say hello to him, it'd be something special. So he Absolutely. Is a, he's a great, fine young man, Will Blaylock. Will this be the largest crowd you've ever put in here? Could be. We had a good crowd against Notre Dame. Um, it was standing room only for them. and But I think tonight might, 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 uh, might beat that. We're so. laughing. Andrew Allegretta. Uh, Vandy's announcer in baseball just walked by here. All right. He gave it the, come on, I'm ready. <laughs> hey, thank you for doing this. Uh, thrilled to be here. It is fun to be out of a studio and nothing against where we are because <laughs> folks at Ford Ice Center have taken care of us <laughs> out in Bellevue. But it is never a bad day when you broadcast from a ballpark. That's exactly right. George, you're the man always, man. I'm we the city's blessed to have you guys and I'm always honored when you when you ask me to be on. Keep saying it and see if anybody <laughs> buys it. We'll keep fooling them, right? <laughs> Thanks, coach. Thanks, man. Coach Jeff Forehand joining us after the break. Jeff him, uh give or take a couple of minutes. We may have to stall around uh because I think we've got him scheduled at 325. He will join us. We'll talk a little sounds baseball. Who knows what else we'll do? Stick around. Nashville, get ready for the greatest show on turf. Electrifying, high-octane, non-stop spring football action. Starting at only $30. Don't miss the season opener this April 27th at Municipal Auditorium. Hi, I'm Jeff Fisher. The Nashville Cats are bringing arena football back to Nashville. Grab your tickets now at thenashvillecats.com and be part of the action. Star Physical Therapy was established in 1997 with one great mission, to serve. If you're hurting, 
Don't wait to receive physical therapy. You don't need a referral to see their physical therapist, and early morning and evening appointments are available. Make the call to 615-673-1420 and get rid of that pain. Star Physical Therapy, the official health provider of Football Friday. I you were in a crash. Yeah. Your kids were in a car with you. We're very lucky to even be telling this story to you. Nikki treated us like family, and she was very caring and loving, and I'm just so grateful for that. She was somebody I could trust, and being a veteran, that's so important to me. My kids are going to have a better life now because I don't have to worry about those expenses that we were out. Your family has really created a legacy of trust, and I would recommend you to anyone. Nashville Sounds baseball is back in Hit City for the 2024 season. Spend your nights and weekends at the ballpark with weekly giveaways, fireworks shows, throwback deals, live music, and more. Top talent will take the field at First Horizon Park against the AAA Minnesota Twins, Baltimore Orioles, Atlanta Braves, St. Louis Cardinals, Cincinnati Reds, and more. Tickets start at just $10 and are available now at NashvilleSounds.com. We will see you in Hit City. Venture Express has been helping people in this area for more than 40 years. They're headquartered in Murfreesboro with over 30 years of dedicated fleets involving production, manufacturing, and corrugated experiences. They're an asset-based company with over 700 tractors, 4,000 trailers, and 800 drivers. If you need their help, dial them up 615-793-9500 or log on to Venture Express. Dot com. If you add the adjoining town. Okay, we're back, and we'll probably shift the camera back around here in a minute. In fact, tell you what I'll do. I'll get out of the way for a second, give people a really good look at this facility. Um, This was, Kelly, in the old days, they played back behind us uh, in a facility called Onion Dell. And I don't really know when they came to move over to this location. But as you can tell, Ken Dugan Field, 330 down the lines, 375 in the alleys, 400 in dead center. So it's your prototypical major league distance. And, man, it's as nice a field. And I know why, because I saw Jeff out here earlier working it. Uh, they, They have a beautiful facility and I hope they have a bunch of people, and I know they're going to. That was a stupid thought on my end. Yeah, they will. This may well be the largest crowd they've ever had. Yeah, I mean, Vanderbilt hasn't been here since, what, they said 2010? 2010. So, yeah, I mean. They it, were saying David Price pitched here. Yeah, I think Vandy that was once. one of the earlier years, maybe yeah. 08 or 09. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I mean, I think they should do this more often, Corbin. I, what a gesture. I figured it was Corbin – going to forehand and saying, hey, feeling bad probably last year. They, you know, Lipscomb, it's a big deal for Lipscomb. You it's and a big I were deal out for, there. It was an awful Yeah, it was, I was night. looking forward to, to, to seeing them play, yeah. but it got rained out last year, and they just moved it over here. So, yeah, it's it's a beautiful day, though. Yeah. So, Kelly, you, you know a little bit about this Lipscomb program. Um, you know, I've told this story before. When, when Jeff made uh, the NCAA tournament, I want to say it was 2008, and that regional was at Georgia, okay, which on on the surface you think, okay, they have absolutely no shot to win. You know, Georgia's an SEC powerhouse. Well, lo and behold, on a Friday afternoon in the opening game of the tournament, Lipscomb beat Georgia in Athens, and just on a little bit of a hunch – 
I contacted Mark McGee, who at the time was Lipscomb's sports information director, and I said, hey, if you all hold on to this, I want Jeff Forehand on the first minute you can get him on. And Kelly, it wasn't 10 minutes after that game was over that he was on with me. And I, I have always remembered that. Yeah, he's a. Uh, I, I got to meet him when my daughter had her ankle uh, issue uh, last year, and what a good, what a good guy. My my daughter loves him. Uh, you know, he said he didn't know her well, but then you know they've gotten to know each other a little bit through her process of trying to get healthy. But uh, man, man, you can't ask for a better coach, a better guy to lead a program. And uh, they had a really good team last year. They made it to the. Uh, they made it into the. Uh, uh, the it was it the regional. Uh, I think they made it to – was it a regional, super regional? I can't Last, remember. But well, they, they made uh, it. They they played Texas yes. a few years ago in a super and almost beat them. Yes. You know yes. that's or right. Or no, was I that had... Tennessee Tech? That was – that's my Tennessee bad. That, Tech, I think that was, that. I think that I was Tennessee Tech. That, but they yeah, have been in regionals it. before. Yeah, and I, and he had a really good team last year. And you look at their record, and they've kind of, like you said, he got it got off to a slow start. But, uh, you know, I, we were – I remember, uh, was it last year that they beat UT when UT – or two years ago when they went up to Knoxville and yeah. uh, beat UT at Knoxville. And they – you know, they didn't have a great year that year, but they were all – they played well that day. And Tennessee, their bashers, you know, were kind of messed up. Their pitching was pretty good. And – uh, you, you just can't say enough about what he's done to that program, what he's meant to that program, and I hope they have a good game tonight. I really do. We've got some really good baseball coaches in this area. Dave Jarvis uh, at Belmont has been there forever, highly respected. Uh, Jeff Forehand here, uh, certainly Tim Corbin goes without saying. What he has done at Vandy is nothing short of miracle worker now over uh, – what, 22-year? 22, he, yep. 22? First year was 03, so yeah. this is his 22nd year. Yeah, and and what he inherited was tough at that time. He really, you know, the, the plan was to build the ballpark. I'm trying to think the, the, the actual. Well, they just, I mean, all they had was a small section of seats. You know, they didn't have they didn't I don't even think they had the renovated uh you know seats similar to what Lipscomb has right now. I'm sure you've seen it, Kelly, but of course Vanderbilt got outfield seats and uh you know they got a jumbotron and looks totally different now. Well, let me say this. When when I was in school there and Kelly, I know you're gonna say, Well, that's you know, pre <laughs> um they basically had three metal bleachers behind home plate. And everybody else had to, um, everybody else had to kind of, um, you know, fend for themselves. So it's come a long ways since then. I agree. I, I agree. I, I just, uh, I, I've been over there to some games, and they've. Uh, it, it's fun going to see. It's fun sitting out there. I, I understand why you like it. Uh, and, and this time of year, uh, he talked about some of those people coming down here, but. In, in February, March, April, I mean, sometimes you get days like this and other times you get 30 degrees. So uh, I think you're just kind of flipping a coin if you're Notre Dame or if you're West Virginia or you're these other teams, Ohio State that you talked about coming down here because it can be brutal down here in these months as well. So uh, I don't know. I'm just uh, – I hope they have a good game tonight and I hope they play well and I hope they put on a show and I hope there's a lot of people that show up and – Coach Forehand, what a what a good guy he is. Just talking to him, you can tell that. Oh yeah, you know I'm sure the kids the kids love him. Uh, they respect him. Uh, you know I, I've seen them. They they came to a basketball game. They had something to do at halftime, and I, I saw all of them. They, they all look like good young men, and uh, they're being led by a really good man, which is cool. We're in a little bit of a four corner stall, and as soon as Jeff Hem is able to get on with us, we'll uh, we'll proceed. Kelly, let me ask you this real quickly. Jim Wyatt sent me a text uh, earlier today um, about who the Titans' first pick will be, and I I texted him back immediately. The alt kid from Notre Dame, big offensive lineman. Do you do you think differently? 
I don't know, George. I, re I really don't. I think that uh, they, they've got to they, – we know that they've got to get a left tackle. Uh, but with them having – is the seventh pick, is that what it is? Eighth seventh pick, overall seventh pick. pick. Yeah, seventh overall pick. Uh, I think with the, the depth of this, of this draft with tackles, you never know what's going to happen. No, no, nobody's going to tell you the truth. I, I think that I, I've heard, and you've heard the same thing, that Rand Carthon loves the, the Joe Alt kid, so if he's there – I think they'll probably take him, but if he's not, where, where does that go? I mean, there's always surprises at, big, at the beginning of the draft. All the Mel Kuypers and the Todd McShays talk about this. They talk about, hey, he's going here, and we've heard nobody really knows because they're not in those meetings. So I think if you had a blockbuster deal and somebody tried to draft up or trade up to get something, and it was something that you couldn't turn down and you could move a couple of places, and then you can maybe get an extra extra pick later on in the draft. I think that's something you have to consider. I've always said that I, I think that Brock Bowers is one of those generational dudes that you could get as a, a tight end that could that could fill a lot of needs. And you could have him for a long time. And then if you could just slide back a little bit and you, know, you you can get a tackle because there's you know Terry talked about it on the show here. There's a lot of tackles in this draft, but. You know, if they're set on Joe Alt, I think that's what you got to get because that's where they're deficient right now. I think if you look at, I think you put it up where their offensive line is right now. If you can get a left tackle that you know that's going to be there for 10 or 11 years, I think that's hard to pass up, George. I really do. Okay. Uh, let me put you on the spot. What would you do? Oh. I, you know, I'm I'm not trying to dodge this question, but I, I haven't done, I haven't been in all that. I, I don't keep up with all right. that. Right. So I, I just keep up all, uh, with it on the on the surface, but I, I don't know how to get a a player to go on. He's like Rich Matthews that could be on your team for 15, 16, 17 years. Yeah. Never get hurt. Always on the field. Always accountable. Uh, I, I think you probably go get him. But I, I'm just – I know how much I like tight ends. And I don't think they've got one, really. I mean, they've got some. But, like, I think that Brock Bowers is the guy that you could go get. I think with, with adding Calvin Ridley, with having DeAndre Hopkins, with Traylon Burks in the wings, with the Moore kid, which he's gone. Sorry, he's gone. But I, th I think they've helped themselves offensively with some weapons. And with getting Tony Pollard, and you got the, you got the kid from Tulane that played last year. And if you can fix that old line, which I think you can do, and it might not be Joe Alt. It might be somebody down the line, a kid from Penn State or, or the other kid. Uh, I forget where he's from. There's no words I can't pronounce. But I, I think you could you could probably wait a little bit. And if you could pick Brock Bowers up, that's, that's the only question mark that I would have. If not, okay. if I didn't have a question mark, I would take Joe Alt. Okay. That's interesting that Bowers is that intriguing to you because I admit he is for me as well. Let me go out to a First Horizon Ballpark from one ballpark to another. And there is Sounds play-by-play -play voice, Jeff Him, And Jeff, we got good weather for the moment, a little windy, but anytime you're at a ballpark, it's a good day. I agree. I agree. Good to be with you guys. And it's a beautiful day. Good to be back home to start a nice homestand here. And uh, looking forward to a good week here at the ballpark. You're right. It's a good good place to be. Okay, I'm going somewhere. You have no idea where I'm going. <laughs> As you know, uh, I'm a subscriber to the MLB Extra Innings Package. And these days, and I don't pretend to know why this is, but in a lot of the commercial breaks, I'm guessing some of this is – is networks that MLB has had to take over from Bally's. But there is a minor league baseball commercial, and I'm betting you've seen it, that runs every night. And I'll bet you 40 to 50% of the film footage that is in that minor league commercial is from y'all. Is that right? I have not yep. seen that. I have not seen it. I will have to keep an eye out for it. Um, I've got the MLB package as well, and so I watch and listen to a lot of games. Um, I, I will say the um, it's it's funny you bring it up because there are times where 
the inning is not over yet and I'm watching or listening to a game and it goes to a commercial um, and I <laughs> I want to pull my hair out. I don't or, or like it, it's or, or if you're you know, you're listening on the radio and right as the half inning is about to end, they'll, and, and I'm you know doing something else. That's kind of the beauty of baseball on the radio. You can do something else while you're listening. So right as whomever is calling this particular game is about to give the score, the, the commercial from somewhere out of who knows where cuts in. And I'm like, wait a minute. I didn't even hear the score. So I'm glad to hear that you're having a positive experience with commercials on MLB Extra Innings, George. And they're showing a beautiful ballpark like the one we have here. Because a lot of times when I try to listen to an MLB broadcast on my phone or on my computer, that it's not so much the commercial itself. But the timing of it drives yeah. me up the wall. So, so uh, one of the shots uh, has to do with the, the whatever that crazy ball is that you put somebody in and roll it. Okay. Okay, that's one of the shots. I'm trying to think what the other shots are, but there are three or four that I'm like, that's the sound stadium. Yeah. And – you know, it's it's a very cool commercial because it's trying to promote what is great about minor league baseball. And part of it is the whole hometown feel and, and all these things that are going on around a minor league game. But in the end, the sounds, and maybe it's just because I know what I'm looking for, dominated the commercial. It's close to 50% of the film footage is coming from First Horizon Park. Well, that's really cool. I'll I will keep a special eye out for that one. Uh, I've not seen it yet, um, but we've got a I mean, we've got a fantastic ballpark here, and I, and I know the front office is very proud of having a lot of different things to offer here, so that whatever someone might be looking for, whether it's the food, whether it's obviously the baseball, whether it's just being outdoors, whether it's the fireworks, whether it's the in-game entertainment, what whatever it is. Um, we want those folks to feel welcome. And that's easy to say. I do think it's harder to accomplish. And I think everybody in the industry says it. I don't think everybody's really good at achieving it. I'm proud to be pro part of an organization. And I have no individual credit to take here in this, but I'm proud to be part of an organization that is really good at it because our ballpark experience I'll put it up against just about anything in this town, in this industry, wherever it is. Um, I, I'm, I'm proud to be part of it because we've got a group that, that knows how to do it right. When I watch Milwaukee, there are obviously a bunch of former sounds in the middle of this. Sal Freelich, uh really running the bases and causing a lot of havoc for other teams. And that's pretty cool to see. I love it. I mean, I, th that's what it, from a baseball standpoint of talking about the sounds, I mean, that's, that's what it's all about. And, and, you know, you, you've lived this life, George, of calling the games. You see the, you see the early work. I'm looking at our field right now. Everybody's out there taking BP, playing catch, throwing a bullpen, getting ready. The, the, the amount of work that gets put in um, is staggering. And I don't know that, that, the sort of the casual fan always appreciates it. Um, and it's true, I'm sure, in other sports because you can't always get into the ballpark or the stadium to see everything that happens. But these guys work so hard. So to see them get up there, one, is phenomenal. To see them stay is kind of part two. And then part three is when they stay, they have an impact on a winning team. And that Brewers team up there is, gosh, I'd have to look at the latest numbers, but it's over 50% former sounds, um, probably even 75% former sounds. Um, when you look at it with Terang, you mentioned Freelick, Jackson Churio, we saw briefly at the end of the last year, but for a 20-year-old already in the big leagues, he is showing no signs of, uh, of struggling just yet. And I'm sure there'll be stretches because their pitchers are really good up there. But man, that, that lineup, Blake Perkins is doing really well. The pitching staff has so many former sounds. That's awesome. I mean, you want you want these guys to get a chance, and when they get a chance, you hope they do well. And, uh, you know, we always tell guys sort of with a half smile because they know what we mean. 
we say, hey, if we, you know, come across somebody who we find out is going up the next day or that night or whatever, we say, hey, good luck. We hope we never see you again. And they know what we mean because there's just a shared <laughs> understanding of how hard it is to get up there. So you hope they don't come back um, <laughs> because it's a pretty special place to be. And we understand that as much as all the guys love playing for the sounds and they love Nashville and they love our ballpark, not the big leagues. And so if you're going to be a triple A, this is the spot you want to be, but it's still not the big leagues. So we understand guys are not necessarily always happy when they're here because the end goal for them is within reach. Kelly, you got one question. We got a little time uh, restraint today, so give him the best question of his life. Well, I don't know about that. I, I, I want two, two things. One real quick, George. Are you able to find Jeff for not being on the program last week? Oh, absolutely not. First of all, okay, he came clean and just said, I forgot, okay? I, I like admire that. that level of honesty. Now, well, I let me, today. Let, let, me, let me add, I didn't forget. I forgot the time that I committed to, and I thought I committed to something 20 minutes later than it was, <laughs> and I realized at the time I thought it was, I was 20 minutes late. That was a great feeling. So That's a final offense, Jeff. Sorry. I said, um, basically, I, I told him that if he forgot today, and I'm not going to say what the penalty was, <laughs> but it was very harsh saying. Well, I'll give Jeff credit. He was doing everything he could to get on today. So, I, Oh, he I know he was. He wasn't. He, he wasn't going to miss today. Billy, I'm going to let you see what the sanctions I, were. But, you, <laughs> yes, you have to keep quiet on that. So, Kelly, do you have anything important? Yeah, yeah. I, I just I just want to – let's get into some <laughs> – no, I don't have anything ever do important. I, I don't have anything important, but I, I just want to get a – because y'all talk about so much other stuff. Give me, give me a little bit about the team, who you like, how's it going. I know y'all are seven and eight on the season. Kind of a, you know, so-so start, I guess. But how do you think the team is shaping up so far? I think the team is playing really well in a tough situation where there are some guys who are either in Milwaukee or on the injured list that would be part of this sounds team that currently are not. And so it is made for some opportunity for some other guys who are trying to take that opportunity and run with it. Um, so there, there is some, a little bit of reshuffling that's had to go on um, with the roster and you're always going to have some of that, but when you have this much this early, um, it's it's created some unique opportunities. Now, there's some other guys that we had a very strong feeling would be in the lineup and are in the lineup and are playing really well. Tyler Black is one of the top 100 prospects in the game. He's in the leadoff spot again tonight for the Sounds. He was absolutely everywhere last week in Memphis. This is a guy that can hit for power. Um, he can get on base. He knows the strike zone well. He's good defensively. He stole 55 bases last year. He is definitely a guy that you'd be you would not be surprised to see find the big leagues at some point this year. Um, in the middle of the order, an outfielder Brewer Hicklin is off to a great start. He had a couple of home runs last week, and then there's a there are a couple of veteran catchers that the Brewers had to go out and add to this Sounds team because of a couple of opening weekend injuries. Um, one to a prospect and one to a, another sound who would have been back with the team this year. So Eric Haas, who's been with Detroit and Cleveland at the big league level, has been tremendous since he cleared waivers and joined the sounds. He's 31 years old, but he's already played over 300 big league games. And then a former Padre and Ray, Francisco Mejia, the Brewers went out and brought in as a free agent. He's come in and you know, catching is not an easy position to just jump in and A, produce offensively, and B, help manage a pitching staff. And those guys have done a terrific job. So the lineup has had to move around a little bit, as you sometimes expect at AAA. But the guys who are here are doing great. And, um, you know, look, the Brewers are atop the NL Central. They're not going to stop calling on the sounds when they have a need. That's what AAA is for. So hopefully, in some sense, we send a ton of guys up there this year to a contributing and contending team. You just hope that it's not always due to injury because you know that that's not what you're rooting for. You're just rooting for guys to go up out of um, just deserving the opportunity. And I think we're going to see some of that as the year goes on. Okay, this is a shorter than normal interview with Jeff. We'll get into all kinds of stuff next week at around three twenty-five, give or take. <laughs> hey, 
Thank you as always. Have a good homestand. I know it's good to be back home. Yep. See you guys soon. Thanks as always, George. Jeff, thank you. Okay, let's do this before we end our broadcast today. Kelly, my intention is to make people money, and that brings us to this. <laughs> Bet of the day. Brought to you by Bart Durham Injury Law. Best in the business. And there you are. Bart Durham Injury Law. So, uh, Billy, let me also say this. Uh, uh, Bart Durham's yeah. funeral was earlier today, and I attended. It is one of the best services that I have ever seen. Dynamic singers. Blair Durham did a wonderful eulogy. I think everybody that walked out at the end, not that funerals are ever fun, uh, but it was a very uplifting experience. And I think Bart would have been, um, I think he would have been very pleased. Well deserved. Yeah. That's special. Well, on to what happened last night. Oh, God. Oh no! I thought we? we've got it marked in. Oh, we've got it marked oh, in no. as a win. Oh, that's right! It was the Phillies. And you forgot. Oh, that's right! What your I bet did was. forget. I did forget. Kelly, take I a know. look at that. It's great, George. Wow, you you did some work this past Friday and yesterday. Nice. Oh, I've I've been busy. So I, I got two winners for you today. You ready? Okay. Okay. The first one involves the Lakers. I just don't believe, and I don't want to believe, that LeBron's season ends in a play-in game. I think the Lakers are going to get in the playoffs, and when they do, or if they do, they're going to lose. Nobody's going to want to play them. Well, we said that. Was it last year we said that? We did. I mean, (laughs) (laughs) LeBron. Billy, thanks a lot. (laughs) I mean, LeBron is the – he's LeBron, but he's not the same LeBron. But they are a dangerous group. Oh, AD's he- – that's the, the difference. Yeah. AD's healthy. If yeah. you saw them Sunday dismantle New Orleans yeah. down there, man, it was impressive. I'm taking the Lakers tonight. I think they win in New Orleans. Game two, I'm not as certain of. Golden State has been on a roll. Sacramento has not been as good this year as people thought they would be. I'm going Golden State minus the two and a half. And, Kelly, those are two wins. Put them on the board. You think so? I hope so. I don't know if there's a line on this one tonight. Uh, Well. But it should be good. Oh, it's going to be very good. If you're in the area, drop by and be a part of the largest crowd in Lipscomb baseball history. I don't don't take my word for this, but I heard between ten fifteen dollars for tickets. So I don't know. No more than that. So if you if you are interested, I would go to their website, check it out, see if you can uh, see if you can get in here. Thanks to my buddy Brian Ryman for setting all this up at Lipscomb. Tomorrow, of course, is the Jeff Fisher and Eli Gold luncheon, and you'll be able to see it if you're not able to be there. There it is. How do they watch it? Well, they can watch it live on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, just like they watch the show live. And so that'll act as the show tomorrow, 1130 to what, 1230, 1245. Yeah, something so, like that. Um, yeah, same way you watch the show, and it'll be fun. We're looking forward to it. Kelly, you sort of get the day off. Oh, nice. I didn't realize that. I'm good. Wow. Sweet. Now you can go play some golf. Wow. Yeah, I played golf this morning. Yeah. Oh, you Instead got up 70, before noon? Got, got up 73. <laughs> I, had the old, I had the old men mad at me. They told me I was going to have to go back to the back tees or I wasn't playing anymore with them. You probably cheated. <laughs> no, I didn't cheat. There was no cheating involved. It's yeah. called striking the golf ball, which I can do. Which I can't do. We're out of here for today. Be sure and catch the show tomorrow because it's going to be really good with two great interviews uh, rolled into one. Eli Gold and Jeff Fisher. Thanks to uh, Brian Ryman and the folks over here at Lipscomb. We'll see you back again tomorrow. 